You got a great location here, I think. We have a fantastic location. We've got a lot going on. This show has been an overwhelming success. We've had a constant flow of dealers that are really looking for solutions to the issues that they have, more so than in years past. So you always get a lot of people come by, hey, what do you do? Okay, thanks, I'll see you later. Scan my badge, follow up with me later. But folks are stopping into the booth asking real deep questions. How can you solve this problem that I'm having in my store? They're, they're spending an hour. They're really getting a lot of good information. So it's, it's been a, just a really tremendous success for us all. I, I want to hear one of those deep questions, but I want to also ask you yeah. how amazing, if the, how's the show been for stream? It's actually been incredible. We had more traffic on day one than we had in previous years. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with the positioning and the growth of stream and, and the more visibility, but um, it was a great uh, attended show on, on the first day where we had a lot of awesome conversations. We launched a new product and people wanted to see that product and they came up. So. It was it was a good it was a good show so far yeah and it was all on your shoulders this time huh yeah uh, a little bit being a show, yeah they said you want to be the VP of marketing they they didn't explain all that went into NADA so it was a huge learning experience uh, and at the same time I feel like this was my baby and I get to see it and it was it's been an awesome 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 trip for me. Yeah. Congrats. What did you guys, did you do anything special, a theme or something gimmicky or anything like that? Yeah, we went with the future is orange um, because I think in advertising a lot of times it's the same old, same old. People pretty much get into a routine and they stick with that routine. And Stream as an agency, not only are we looking at data and being a lot strategic uh, with dealers, their messaging, their brand message, placements, but then we went and developed technology, and we have um, our we have a proprietary AI called Fiona. Uh, Fiona AI powers all of our technology. And, Why Fiona? Um, you would have to talk to our chief product officer about that. The coders uh, were all in the back room coming up with names. They're like, yeah. Fiona's it. Yeah, it, I think it was more of I. I couldn't tell you how or why it just came to be, but it it came to be and it works really well with what we're doing. It is memorable. unique. Memorable. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Did you come up with your deep question? I've got tons of deep questions. Oh, let's hear one. Don't answer. I just want to hear it. Uh, overwhelmingly, a lot of dealerships are, are becoming more and more focused on fixed stops. So the question that more, was on more dealers' lips than anything else is how can you help me increase my fixed stop business, my retention, my customer satisfaction, my workflow efficiency? And they weren't just like, okay, thanks, uh, give me a bullet point. They were sitting on chairs and, and I would look over and they were looking at screens for an hour. Yeah. So dealership, dealer personnel seem to come to the show with more of a focused intent than in years past. There's always people here to look for some information, see what the next new gimmick is, but I think one of the things that we're seeing is there wasn't a lot of new gimmicks, but there was better ways to use what you have, Absolutely. better ways to increase your work efficiency. So now it's like, okay, we've, we've got all the technology available, now how do we really use it? How do we dive into it, learn about it, become better at the things that we're already doing, and really start to make this work? Okay, hold on, if you don't mind. No. Dealer built, Lightyear, DMS company. Can you give an example of how you're working with a dealer to answer that as far as you know, impacting their fixed ops operation or profitability or process? One of the things we've done is we've partnered with a company and entered a strategic partnership with them for texting. A lot of dealerships are aware of texting. You gotta text your customers because that's the communication tool they're comfortable with, right? We all know that. How do we do that and make it efficient? If the service advisor is working in the DMS system, that environment is writing up an RO or the technician comes and says, hey, this customer could really use breaks. You may want to get it done while they're here We can and, and make it uh, a smooth, efficient process for them. Well, then he has to minimize that window, maybe open up another browser, go to an app, send the, the customer a text, go back into his work environment, what we've done is we've embedded it within the DMS. So we've given the service riders the ability to just open up that window, send a text, hey, we can get your breaks done right now and still keep you on your promise time at 4 o'clock this afternoon, yes or no, let's move forward, go back to work, the customer responds, it's in that same screen where they're at. Because sometimes if you give people technology and say, hey, this is going to help you do your job, but it's extra steps, 
it's not really increasing efficiency. And then they get frustrated, like, yeah, it's supposed to make my job easier, but there's nine extra things I got to do to do this. How is that saving me time? But if you put it in the same environment where they're already at, where they live and breathe for eight hours a day, it just can increase efficiency. They're more willing to use it. They're more going to see the response from it. And once they, they start getting those customers responding back and they say, hey, this does work and it is efficient, you guarantee that you're get buying that way. All right, I like that. Okay, what about at Stream? What's, what's some theme or trend or something, some sort of, I don't know, breaking insight that you uh, feel you, you gained this, this weekend? I feel like there are a lot more dealers asking the right questions to their advertising partners or to any partner of, what are you really going to do for me? How is this going to help? Because we see a lot of switching of providers, especially in the agency space. People feel like, it's not working, I'm just going to go somewhere else instead of having those collaborative conversations, which typically happen when they're about 45 days from canceling. But the fact that they're asking proactively these questions even before the relationship starts, um, I think is huge. And they're also really willing to engage with advertising technology to say, let's be smart about what we're doing. Let's be smart about the placement and the, like, the brand promises, the unique selling propositions, not something that people know to do that doesn't have, we have Wi-Fi and we're a family owned place that doesn't really give anything of tangible value to the dealer. So I think asking the right questions and engaging technology in the right way, um, I think is exciting because while people aren't changing, all of our behaviors of how we engage with e-commerce has changed because of Amazon and Google and you know everything else. So the, the, the fact that they're thinking through those things and not just finding the shiny object and placing it and thinking that it's done, thinking through those st steps and engaging partners to truly collaborate is, I think. I think partnerships is the key word. Yeah. And that's really something that's, that's come completely 180 degrees. Because dealerships traditionally just look for someone they can give money, take my problem, yeah. you solve it, I don't want to deal with you. And then those vendors are calling them up saying, hey, what? What can we help you with? You know, what specials you got coming on? I don't have time for all this. You just do it. Yeah. And they're realizing that it is a partnership. It, it, we have to work with our vendor partners to get the most return out of it. And it's been like the light of day is shining. And, and I know a lot of vendors are really happy about that relationship now. Rather than just you pay us, we do your thing, we're working together. Yes. Yeah. I like that. You're seeing more Back accountability on the vendor side. Back to basics. And I think in the industry, we've unfortunately got into that routine of just handling it, that the word partnership became a bad negative connotation. Um, and now it's, let's really engage with each other. Um, and that's something I think Stream does really, really well, month in, month out, and I'm really proud of that. Yeah. You should come engage with us on our podcast. Let's you know, like, come on, and this guy's there all the time. Preferably when my voice is. I was going to say, what's up with your voice? I thought I had it bad. I didn't even go to any parties at all. Um, no, I just, when it's dry, I get I yeah. get sick. Oh, that's rough. Right. I had to do the white collar therapy show this morning at 7, and, and I was like, and I had these uh, <laughs> these earplugs in, <laughs> and I was like in the back, and I'm like, bah, bah, bah. <laughs> anyway, sorry about that. All right, Subi, thanks for popping in here. Course, Impromptu. Thank you for having me. You're good at that, that's what I like about you. Thank you so much for having me. I, I please, if you are still here, um, or it's not live. oh, that's right, it's not yeah. live. But we get to know to me. Next year. <laughs> Where can they find you? Exactly. Uh, social media. It's pretty easy to find me. My name is Subi Ghosh. Um, find me anywhere or G O S H. G H O S H. Yeah, it's important. I think I'm the only one <laughs> in automotive. I'm pretty sure if you're so, in automotive, you know Subi anyways. Yeah. But brand new in automotive you started yesterday then you may want to find her you know it's a big enough industry where like we know each other yeah. for so long but you know not everybody knows everybody sometimes no. like, i mean i remember meeting um paul daly uh, a little over a year ago you know and and he'd been you know started his podcast a year ago and he's just coming on the scene i'm like where has this guy been but you know he, it takes time to work through Absolutely. all the noise and Absolutely. and cut through there so you can also just look up streamcompanies.com probably the easiest way to find me because my name is complicated. What does the future is orange mean, by the way? What is that? Like, what's the, what's the idea behind that? So the concept really is that 
in a time when we as companies get used to doing things the same way, um, and there's so much in a time in a time when used to doing things the same way. Long time ago, silver work. But there aren't a lot of providers that really understand both the history of a client and what needs to go into the math for strategy, to have a data-driven strategy, but looking to the future constantly, not only with what the consumer behavior, how, it's, how we need to adapt to it, evolve, and think forward that way, but create innovative solutions to problems that haven't even become a big talking point yet. And that's what orange is. Well, we're the big, we're the, the big orange company. Um, stream is the future. Your future stream. is yeah. orange because stream is orange. That is correct. There we go. I, I knew I'd figure it out. Now he's tied it all in. You see the gears working? Yeah. yeah. And at dealer build, it's like the present is red. Red is now. Okay. You're <laughs> All right, we're out of here. Mike's a nice way of Come, saying, probably. Come on, we're done. All right, thanks for uh, sitting with us here. Thank thanks for having at me. At the Dealer Built Light thanks Year. Let me sit with Subi and you and be a part of this conversation, yes. man. Mike the Car Guy Carrera. All right, we're done. Sayonara. Yeah. Did you want to try to get on this chair again? <laughs>